Chief. Don't you worry about it, Chief. It won't be permanent. I want to see something permanent. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, you. <laughs> you might feel something permanent. Just put your hand underneath my cap. Just be a little lump. Knock on all on St. Paddy's Day, Boston. I got that beat. I got that beat. Some more eel. Fit right through my wetsuit. Well, nope, no, listen, I don't know about that, but I entered an arm wrestling contest in an Oki Bar in San Francisco. You see this? Now I can't extend that. You know why? Got to the semi-final, celebrating my third wife's demise. Big Chinese fella, he pulled me right off. taking samples. I got something for you. That's the thresher. You see that? Chief Thresher's tail. Thresher? It's a shark. You want to drink? Drink to your leg? I'll drink to your leg. Okay, so we <laughs> drink to our legs. <laughs> Sweaty. Right there. Mary Ellen Moffat. She broke my heart. <laughs> What's that one? What? That one there, on your arm. Oh, well, it's a tattoo. I got that removed. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Mother. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> to Hooper, that's the USS Indianapolis. You on the Indianapolis? What happened? Japanese submarine slammed two torpedoes into her side, Chief. It was coming back. From the island of Tinian, the lady just delivered the bomb, the Hiroshima bomb. Eleven hundred men went into the water. The vessel went down in twelve minutes. Didn't see the first shark for about half an hour. Tiger, thirteen footer. You know, you know that when you're in the water, chief. You tell by looking from the dorsal to the tail. Well, we didn't know. But our bomb mission had been so secret, no distress signal had been sent. <laughs> they didn't even list us overdue for a week. Very first light, Chief. Sharks come cruising. So we formed ourselves into tight groups. You know, it's... Kind of like old squares in a battle, like you see in a calendar, like the Battle of Waterloo. And the idea was, shark comes to the nearest man, that man, he starts pounding and hollering and screaming. Sometimes the shark would go away. Sometimes he wouldn't go away. Sometimes that shark, he looks right into you, right into your eyes. You know the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white, and then... Oh, then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming. The ocean turns red, and in spite of all the pounding and the hollering, they all come in and they rip you to pieces. <laughs> you know, by the end of that first dawn, Lost a hundred men. I don't know how many sharks. Maybe a thousand. I don't know how many men. They average six an hour. But 
Thursday morning, Chief. I bumped into a friend of mine, Herbie Robinson from Cleveland. Baseball player, Bosun's mate. I thought he was asleep. Reached over to wake him up. Bobbed up and down in the water. It was like a kind of top. Upended. Well, he'd been bitten in half below the waist. Noon the fifth day, Mr. Hooper, Lockheed Ventura saw us. He swung in low and he saw us too. The young pilot, a lot younger than Mr. Hooper anyway, he saw us and he come in low. And three hours later, a big fat PBY comes down and starts to pick us up. You know, that was the time I was most frightened, waiting for my turn. I'll never put on a life jacket again. So, oh, 1,100 men went in the war. 316 men come out, the Sharks took the rest, June the 29th, 1945. Anyway, we delivered the bomb. <laughs>